Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, and welcome back to the next part of the Dark Souls full playthrough walkthrough. Uh, it's been a little while since I did these, or did a part of this walkthrough. I took a break for about a week. Uh, so I'm just checking to see what part we're actually up to here. I think it's 18. Uh, no, 16. Man, we've done a lot of these things. What part are we on? Painted World was 16, so yeah, we are on 17. All right, in part 17, we are gonna head down to the catacombs. Hello, other player. Uh, we are gonna head down to the catacombs, get ourselves the Rite of Kindling by killing Pinwheel down there. Uh, we're also gonna gain access to a blacksmith, which is, I think he's called the Undead Blacksmith. Uh, his name is Vamos, and he's the guy who can make big fire weapons. So he's an important person that we're gonna reach as well. Before we head into the catacombs, uh, should tell you how these guides work. This is a full playthrough style. It's a let's play style, so I'm recording as I talk and as I play. So you may hear a little bit of background noise. Um, I do edit these down a little bit if I take too many deaths. Um, if there's a lot of funny ones, I'll put them at the end as a montage like I did with Bed of Chaos in Lost Isolith because I hate that boss. Okay, uh, I'll show you my character stats. Currently level 75, 30 vitality, 30 endurance, 20 strength, uh, 36 decks, and that's it. And then my equipment, this is very important that I need to talk about here. I have a Yuji Katana plus 15, so things are gonna die pretty quick, but I'm also coming down here with a Divine Yuji Katana plus five. And the reason I'm bringing this weapon here is because there are several enemies, they're all skeletons, in the catacombs that will resurrect as long as their corresponding pyromancer, or, or necromancer, I guess, is alive. The necromancers are killed once enemies, but the skeletons are always guarding them. But if you kill them with a divine weapon, they stay dead even if the necromancer is alive. So bringing in a divine weapon is really, really helpful. It's also helpful for the part we're gonna do after this, which is Tomb of the Giant. And it's helpful for Gravelord Nito's boss fight because he has a similar mechanic where he can raise up skeletons um, that will constantly resurrect as long as Nito's alive. But if you bring a divine weapon, they stay dead. Okay, I also have the Crest Shield, the Gold Hem set. I don't need the Rusted Iron Ring, so let's go ahead and put the Wolf Ring and the Ring of Steel Protection. All right, that's it. We are also going to um, gain access to the Gravelord Covenant. Um, in order to do that, you need at least one Eye of Death, and they are an uncommon drop from the Basilisk enemies um, in the Depths and in um, the Great Hollow. So if you don't have one, um, go get one. And it's important to do this now, because once you kill Nito as a boss in Tomb of the Giant, um, you can no longer access the Gravelord Covenant, and you can no longer level up the Covenant. So it's really important that you do it quickly. Or you do it now, rather. So we're just going to kill some skeletons here in the graveyard, gain access to some items. Chances are you did this really early on. Um, I just like to sort of ignore this area until I'm good and ready to go down to the catacombs. Uh, there's the binoculars over here. The Zweihander is here. Uh, the Zweihander is an incredibly strong uh, two-handed sword. I think this is it. Oh, this is the winged spear. So the winged spear is pretty good as well. It's a good starting weapon. I think this might be the Zweihander. Yeah, so this is the Zweihander. It's a big, heavy sword. Um, oh, I did not want to backstab. It's okay, though. No, oh, that was nice. They all grouped up for me. So that's the Zweihander. It's a really big two-handed sword that deals a lot of damage. Scales really well for strength builds. It's the same sword that Siegmeier of Katarina uses. And this is the binoculars. Somebody once told me that you could see Blight Town from here. I have never understood that. I don't know where to look to see Blight Town. Um, but somebody once told me that. And uh not that I don't believe him, but I, I just don't know where <laughs> to look. Maybe it's like down there or something. Oh, I guess I guess it is. I guess it is down there. Interesting. I wonder if you die in Blight Town will you see a blood stain here. Anyway, so this is the entrance to the catacombs right here. If you can have a look. Yeah, I guess that is Blight Town. Okay. Anyway, we're going to walk down here, and then we're going to come into a really big dark room. And what I should mention is I have the uh, the Sunlight Maggot Helm. And I received this in Lost Isolith. Uh, so if you haven't already, 
you don't necessarily need it, but it helps out because it emits light from your head, and it makes moving around this area a lot less treacherous, because you can see the pits, you can see the stairs, and all that. All right, so right here, there are some skulls that are being emitted from a big goopy guy downstairs, way downstairs. So we can kill these skeletons, they stack bleed. And then from here on out, I'm gonna go ahead and equip. Here, let me show you what happens. I'm pretty sure these guys are controlled by a pyromancer. Yes, they are. So you'll notice that I didn't get any souls from these guys, and that's because they're just gonna resurrect. But if we kill them with a divine weapon, this may take a couple hits. Yeah, if, if we kill them with a divine weapon, we do get the souls. Oh boy. And they stay dead. I don't know why this guy is alive. Yeah, there we go. That's strange. I wonder if he died from bleed, maybe? Yeah, he probably died from... Well, I guess undead can't bleed. I don't know why that guy stayed alive. Anyway, the other way to do this is to kill their corresponding necromancer. And this necromancer is right here. And you'll notice... Here, I'll, I'll try to get some of the skeletons in here. This way you can see what happens. Hi. Yeah, come on in. Yeah, I, I want to bring these guys in this way you see what happens. Can you cross the threshold? Yeah, there you go. So, okay, let's go ahead and kill the pyromancer. Or the necromancer. I, I really forget what these guys are called. Anyway, we kill him. And then all of the skeletons die that it was controlling. Oh, I guess they just... Oh, that's weird. Maybe I totally forgot how this works. I know that he controls them. I guess they don't die automatically, but uh, now that they now they will stay dead if we uh, kill them with a regular weapon. Anywho, we're going to push this lever. That's going to open a door on the other side. Yep, pulls down that wall. And then we now have access to this bonfire. Let's move ahead and light that. And we'll keep on moving. All right. A lot of these statues are booby traps, so you do have to be careful. So there's another pyromancer over there, or necromancer. I'm going to keep using that term interchangeably. These guys do this really cool Neo move. From, like, Matrix Reloaded. So just keep using your divine weapon. It'll help you a lot. If, you have, if you've upgraded to plus five, chances are you'll be able to kill him in just a couple hits. So we're going to come in here. And the Pyromancer is going to run away once we get near him. Yep. Just let him do that. Because we, we can take care of these guys on our own since we have the Divine Weapon. Ugh. Die. Jesus. I'm like face hanking a lot of this and I shouldn't be. There's an archer, as you can hear him. This is why it's fun to do this area late, because you can really just, like, face tank a lot of stuff and not have to worry about it. He's going to keep running. We can catch up with him. And give him the old... Give him the old backstab a -roo. And then now we can kill these guys with a normal weapon. All right? Let me come in here. And then... <laughs> oh, boy's going to try to <laughs> roll... Towards us, I recommend just keep on. You just keep on using the divine weapon because sometimes the skeletons around you, it, after you've been chasing a pyromancer for a while, um, or a, a necromancer. I'm just gonna look up what these dudes are called because I, I swear to God, I'm gonna keep doing this. Dark Souls, necromancer, Dark Souls. undead mage. No, that's Vectra Life. I don't trust Vectra Life. Yeah, Wiki Dot says necromancers. So that's also known as an undead mage. Okay. Um, so, even after you've been chasing a necromancer around for a while, it may lead you to a different pack of skeletons that that necromancer doesn't necessarily control, um, and you can sort of get in tr into trouble uh, if you are not careful. I'm not sure if this is one of them. It is not. Okay. So there's another necromancer kind of near here. All right. So there's nothing over... Is this an illusory wall? No. There's a there's an illusory wall in the catacombs here. I always forget the, the exact location of. 
turning around this corner, we're going to get to that archer that was harassing us before. And all the skeletons should have rolled out of here, so this shouldn't be too hard. But one just came alive here. Alright, so that's this section here. Don't forget about this treasure. And then you would be tempted to sort of jump out of here, but don't do that. That just brings you back to the floor we were just on. Instead, the exit is right here. And you'll notice that this this is like a spike-lined wall, and, and there's a necromancer in the distance there who's going to start chucking fire at us. So you want to just run past all of these skulls as quick as you can. And these skeletons are controlled by that necromancer that we saw in the distance over there. So, at this point, you want to take out your divine weapon and start working on these guys yourself. These guys have so much life. Alright. So that'll, uh, you know, keep you sane for a little while. And then, if you do the, the catacombs early, Patches the Hyena will be over here, controlling that switch, and he will actually sort of send you down to a place you don't want to go. But if you do it late, and you've already run into him somewhere else, uh, he won't be here. But it's just an interesting little thing that changes depending on the order in which you play the game. Alright, so we can hit this switch now, and this will move that bridge over there, leading to the Necromancer. Alright. So, still use your Divine Weapon here, just to make it easier on yourself. And then once we sort of cross over the bridge, the necromancer... Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> booby trap statue. The necromancer is going to start running away. So you got to be careful. I said the necromancer is going to try to run away, so you got to be careful. I mean, dude, if you don't want to run away, I mean, that's totally fine. Oh, well. He didn't want to run. What are you going to do? Okay, so now that he's dead, um, we're going to come in here. And then, actually, there's another switch that we need to hit. And I want to make sure that we hit it correctly. So, since that necromancer's dead, this guy should die real quick. No, this is a different necromancer. See what I mean? You can kind of get caught up uh, with the different necromancers. So, let's wait for him to resurrect. Kill him with the divine weapon. Great. Now he stays dead. And there's going to be... This is a booby trap here. Yep, there you go. But you can sort of skirt around it going to be a few dudes down here. Yep. How you doing? And I think there's one over here. Yep. And there's there's the necromancer. Oh, that was nice. So, I'm pretty sure that if if a skeleton falls down the pit, it will actually go all the way down and uh, it will stay alive. <laughs> so we may run into that skeleton later. Um, we're going to pillage this body, and this is the Skull Lantern. This is a rare drop, um, and what it does is it's, you can sort of sacrifice a shield, or, you know, a, a hand, to have a light. So, very similar to the Sunlight Maggot. It does the same exact thing. Um, unfortunately, you can't use it as a pyromancy flame like the Necromancer was doing, but you know, it's pretty interesting. In case you don't have the Sunlight Maggot, you can use a Skull Lantern to help you out. But it is a rare drop. It's not a guarantee. Okay, so this is the switch I was looking for before. We're going to go ahead and push that. And this is going to flip a bridge right... I think it opened a door, actually. These switches get a little confusing. Okay, so right here, this seems like a ledge that leads to death. And in a lot of ways, it will. However, it leads to a blacksmith. I'm not going to go down there just yet. Um, I'm going to do something else first. The Catacombs is a little frustrating. Um, it got better with um, with the remaster because they added a bonfire down there by that blacksmith. However, I'm not going to not going to go there just yet. So now that Necromancer's dead, this guy should stay dead. Yep, great. Oh, we got more friends. So these are booby traps. Soul of a Proud Knight. And then... Yeah, okay. I'm looking for a hole. <laughs> You'll see why in a second. Um, okay, so come out here. And then... Come down here. And this is a bit of a shortcut. 
There's a ledge right there, but I'm not going to go there just yet. Instead, we're going to come down this hallway here. And then this is going to lead to a bonfire, which is very, 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 very helpful. So there is a switch up this ladder. Okay, this is where patches would be. And push the lever, and this will flip the bridge over there near the fog wall. Great. And then we can come over here, and interestingly enough, there's a hint here from another player. This hidden path ahead. But if we look very carefully, we can see... Where is it? I'm pretty sure you could see this bonfire from another location. Maybe not. Anyway... Uh, we'll, we'll see it on the other side. Anyway, just roll through here carefully. And then there's a bonfire right here. Very, very helpful bonfire. Yeah, see, you, you should have been able to see this, like, near that first switch that we hit. You can see it right there. Cool little hint that there's a bonfire nearby. Okay, so with that done, roll past this again. And then we are going to go through the fog wall. So once we're through, we should take out our Divine Weapon one more time. More skellies for us to deal with. Here they come. Alright. And then there's an illusory, not, not an illusory wall, but a breakable wall right there. However, there are some skeletons here already. So we gotta be careful. And we just gotta drop down and then deal with any that show up. But there is, of course, an archer trying to kill us from a distance up here. And this is why the divine weapon is really, 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 really important. So I am not, here's the ladder back up, but I'm not gonna take that just yet. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around. This way we get out of the way of the archer. It just becomes a little bit easier. Oh, there he is. I was waiting for him. That just scared the bejesus out of me. Okay, cool. Wow, that legit scared me. All right, so in here is the Dark Moon Seance Ring. And this ring is really, really important because it unlocks... Um, if you remember in my Anor Londo walkthrough, I mentioned that the Dark Moon Tomb Bonfire has a statue of Gwyn in front of it, and I told you that that statue is an illusion. You need to be wearing the Dark Moon Seance Ring, um, and then you can walk in front of that statue, and then the statue will disappear. So that's how you get uh, get through that illusion. You need the Dark Moon Seance Ring. So we're gonna come up here, come through here, and then there should be a Pyromancer right here. Yep. All right. So that should have been the final Pyromancer, I believe. And then this little ledge leads back to where we were with the breakable wall where that hint is. We're not done just yet, though. Instead, we're going to climb this ladder. It's a long one. Okay. And then I'm pretty sure there's like a Pyromancer or something over here. Roll through these. Oh, gosh. Yeah, a Miracle Tranquil Walk of Peace. And then this is like a false floor. And then this brings us all the way back to like near the beginning. Where that archer was and that first... Uh, and that first necromancer that we dealt with. So this is where we are. So we just gotta do a little bit of backtracking, not a lot. And there are shortcut paths kind of through this place that allow you to just sort of like fall from bridge to bridge to bridge, but I'm not particularly good at them, so I'm just not going to do it. What's interesting is that we've gotten a decent amount of soft humanity. I find that neat. Okay, so we're going to come through here, and then this is another false floor right here. And then this brings us down here with a couple of crystal lizards. So if you want some goodies... Go for it. And then we can keep on moving through this 
terrifying statue garden. And there's a ladder right here. All right, and then we get another false floor right here. And then this brings us to the switch near the hidden bonfire right there. Oh, boy. A lot of twists and turns and a lot of graves to walk through. All right. Come back across this bridge. All right. Come through here. All right. And then we're going to... All right. This is the little ledge here. All right. I don't want to do that just yet. Roll down here. And then this is the switch we hit. Right. Okay. So I'm just sort of getting my bearings again. So that's the switch we hit, so we're going to walk up. And then we can come through here. We did this already. Right. Is this the exit? Yeah, this is the exit that I was looking for. Okay. Cool, so now that we're here, we can drop down here, and then we can carefully drop down again. Great. And then this is just above where that switch is. And this should be the Great Scythe. Yep, this is a really, really good dex weapon, a lot of fun to use. Now the false floor, this drops us down here, which is a new location that we haven't been just yet. So let's just heal up really quick. And then I'll backtrack a bit just to get rid of some skeletons and and all that. I'm not 100% sure if we've killed this corresponding pyromancer, so I don't I don't really want to take the chance. Oh boy. All right. Walk around here. And we're at a very very important place in our journey. Okay, so this is the breakable wall we went through with the uh, Skeleton Archer. Right, okay, so this is actually what I was looking for. I admittedly got a little lost. Okay, so we're gonna come through here, and then we're gonna climb up this ladder. Hopefully we don't get hit too much by the Archer and fall off. No, you can't see us. Great. All right, so the Archer's down. Cool. There we go. Slide on down. And then there's another ladder over here. I think this leads to a treasure. No, this allows us to leave. Okay, great. So I'm not going to go through that section again. I just killed the archer and now we can leave. And now we can proceed through the rest of the catacombs here. So I mentioned before that we're at a very, very important part of the catacombs, and that is the entrance to the Grave Lord Servant Covenant. So you need an Eye of Death. Let me walk into this room first. Uh, be careful, there is a Bone Wheel skeleton in here, so you, you gotta be very, very careful. But in order to enter the Grave Lord Servant Covenant, you need an Eye of Death, which, like I mentioned before, drops from the Basilisk enemies in the Depths and the Great Hollow. So... Uh, you lure phantoms from other worlds. Only Covenant users can use the item, while Hollows cannot. Um, so it doesn't really give you many hints that you need to bring them here to the catacombs, but that's okay. Dark Souls isn't big on hints. So right now I'm just trying to bait out this Bone Wheel Skeleton as best I can. Be careful in here, because there is a false floor that we don't want to fall through. We don't want to go in there just yet. There is also a prowling demon in here. So you gotta be careful with him. Is there no bone wheel skeleton here? Okay, before we deal with him... I need to find the bone... I know the bone wheel skeleton is in here. Unless I'm just kind of crazy and... Forgot? I played a mod, and I was stuck in the catacombs in that mod for a long time. Alright, get the large soul of the nameless soldier. I guess there's no bone wheel skeleton? Maybe he rolled out and fell to his death, but... I could have sworn there was one in here. Anywho. Oh, Jesus Christ. Couldn't resist. He's not dead. 
no, he's controlled by a necromancer. Away from to resurrect, and then take out your divine weapon. Give him the old one too, and he stays there. Why doesn't this always work? Does he have to be fully resurrected or something? Okay. I guess the bleed... You know what I think is happening? I think the bleed from my Yuchi Katana is stacking and then killing him, but the bleed doesn't count as a kill. Anyway, we gotta deal with the Prowling Demon now. Everybody's favorite. We're fighting him in a really tight space. He's gotta be very careful. Luckily, if you have a plus 15... Oh, Jesus. Luckily, if you have a plus 15 weapon, it'll be quicker than you might expect, because this one doesn't have a ton of health. Oh, God. Alright, so the Prowling Demon's down. And we can come over here, but be very careful on this floor. And then we get an Eye of Death. So, okay, that's nice. It's actually guarding an Eye of Death. And then, wow, the second Titanite catch pole of the run. That's crazy. So there is a coffin here, and we're going to nestle in the coffin, get all snuggly, and then we just wait. And as long as you have at least one Eye of Death in your inventory, you will get a cutscene. You just got to wait. Keep on waiting. There we go. It's a long time. It's a long wait. I think it's longer than waiting for the crow to take you back to the end of the asylum. And then this is a first person view, which is pretty rare for Dark Souls. You get like a first person camera view. And then <laughs> we see a really spooky image of somebody sliding the coffin closed. And then if you listen closely, you could sort of hear it being dragged. And then it opens again. All right. But now we're in a really dark place. <laughs> All right. So once we're here, we can walk over this way to a really big coffin and Gravelord Nito is inside. We could pray to the sarcophagus Gravelord and enter the Covenant. And then now we have access to the Gravelord Covenant. Keep in mind, however, uh, I think you could stay in the Gravelord Covenant um, even after Nito's dead, but you can't upgrade the Covenant. You can't give your Eyes of Death uh, to him to upgrade it. And there's, you know, a couple of uh, a couple of miracles that he has, a couple of dark miracles. So um, if you want to you know, build that up and you know, you're you going for the All Miracles trophy or the All Spells trophy, whatever it is. Um, don't kill Nito just yet. Either just farm Basilisks for a while or Gravelord people. I mean, Gravelording is so much fun. Basically, you put down your sign using an Eye of Death and then a random player who is human uh, somewhere in the world gets selected to be Gravelorded and then red phantom enemies spawn in their world. And they have to kill those enemies uh, well, they don't have to, but the only way to get rid of them permanently is to find your sign and, uh, <laughs> and summon you into their world and kill you. So, you know, it, it's a it's a really good way to mess with people. <laughs> the Grand Lord Coven is like the meanest thing they've ever put in this game, but it's so much fun. Anyway, to go back, we can just nestle in the coffin, and it's an instant transport now. We don't have to wait. Um, you know, it, it, it's instant now. You just have to wait the first time. All right, so Nito brings us back to the catacombs. We will see him again in the next part as a boss. All right, let's skip that cutscene. Okay, so that is the Gravelord Covenant. And then there is... I think there's a false floor here. There's a false floor somewhere. We'll probably get caught off guard by it, but you want to be very careful because that false floor will drop you onto a black knight. So you got to be really, really careful. Anyway, we're going to come through here now. And then slide down this ladder. Careful, though, because there are some skeletons, so be sure to take out your... Oh, there it is. 
God. Sweet baby Jesus. I told you he was here. Oh man, that's so funny. I, I completely forgot where the floor was, but I knew it existed. Anyway, we got the Black Knight Shield and the White Titanite Chunk. Um, unfortunately, we are in a pretty bad place right now. Um, and there's like only one way to get out of it, and it's <laughs> through the worst place in the world. I'm just double checking that there's no ladder here, but I, I know, yeah, there, there is not. Okay, so now what we have to do, Jesus, is, is this guy in a wall? Yeah, there's a skeleton in a wall, and that's great. Anyway, now what we have to do is we need to, oh my god, dude, just jump through the ceiling if you want to fight me. We gotta drop down to the floor and take out a lot of bone wheel skeletons. I don't think the bone wheel skeletons have a pyromancer or a necromancer to deal with. Um, so that's good at least. But there's a lot of them, as you can see. And this is gonna suck. We actually may die here. Oh yeah, there's just a skeleton stuck in the wall. Okay, so luckily these do not have a Pyromancer. Wow, that was that was good. We got him with a good drop there. Okay. So, we're going to walk through here. And then now we can sort of backtrack to where we were. And here's that Pyromancer from before. So there he is. These guys are going to resurrect since I killed... Let's see, I think they're going to resurrect. No, okay. They're staying dead. And then... Now we can come through here, and uh, we're going to go back to where we fell. So funny that happened. That Black Knight is a kill once enemy, so you don't have to worry about him again. Anyway, <laughs> so we're going to walk through here. Be very careful, because these are false floors as well. <gasps> oh! Wow, it's been a long time since the skeleton parried me. I totally forgot they could do that. Anyway, so this is the ladder we came down. Oh, boy. Yeah, so this is the ladder that we came down. This is the room where we had the Prowling Demon and the Sarcophagus to the Gravelord Covenant. And, uh, yeah, so that's that. Um, since we are we have now accessed the ground floor, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to backtrack and show you how to get to Vamos, the, uh, the undead blacksmith. Okay. Cool. So let's backtrack a little bit. I could have sworn there was a blob monster on the ground that was em emitting these red skulls, but I guess not. Okay. So Vamos is really tricky to get to. Uh, luckily, however, in the remaster, they put a warpable bonfire near him, um, which allows for really quick access to him. Uh, but if you're playing Prepare to Die Edition on PC, or if you're playing the PS3 or 360 version, uh, you will have to go the long way every single time you want to visit him. Sorry. Okay, so we're going to come through here. This is uh, near the bonfire. And then what we're looking for is that big spiral staircase from earlier. I think it's... Yeah, down here. Okay, cool. So we have to do some really careful rolling. Um in order to gain access to this. So we gotta land where that hint is. So I think I'm actually just gonna drop. Yep, great, so we just gotta drop. And then we can drop again here. Perfect, pick this up, green titanite shard, great. And then we drop again onto these hints. Careful. Whew, man, had we fallen all the way, that would have been bad. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drink, but once we land, we're going to hit a cutscene, and you can actually hear him hammering away right now. Vamos. So this bonfire is brand new. Uh, this wasn't here in the original, so it's a very nice addition. 
Um, we're going to talk to Vamos. We have a couple of embers that we can give him. Uh, we have... What do we have? We have the large flame ember, the chaos flame ember. So we're going to give both of these to him. Why, is that an ember from New Londo? And a fine ember it be. What do you say? Why not leave it with me? I'll give you a flame to feast your eyes upon. Yes, yes, very well. We'll get these old bones to work. <laughs> well, what was that about? Don't be coming around here without a good reason. <clears throat> Why, that's an ember unlike any that I have seen. A very curious pattern. Could it be the flame of the legendary witch? I know. Suppose you left that ember with me. Old Vamos would never let you down. No, not ever. <laughs> yes, splendid. Splendid indeed. My, oh my. You precious little thing. Alright, so that's both embers for Vamos. Let's see what he has to say. I'm here to smith, not to chit-chat. I've told you, I'm here for the trade, not for the talk. Enough with your presence. It disturbs me. Okay, so obviously not a, not a chatty guy. We can use him to repair our equipment, which is very helpful right now, because we've been here a while. Let's go ahead and do that. And then, uh, if you want to purchase anything from him, he sells Homeward Bones. He sells the Armor Smith box. We may as well buy that at this point. Sell some Titanite shards, and then some arrows. So, not much from him, but again, you're really only ever going to use him if you want to build fire weapons, or, you know, level up at least one fire weapon as high as it can go, or a chaos weapon for those trophies. So that's Vamos. Much easier to reach um, in the remake, because, you know, he has this bonfire nearby. And then he breaks open this wall, which, again, leads down to the basement. Uh, we do want to be very, very careful here. Because there's a few more bone wheel skeletons. And we go ahead and aggro these guys. Just so we can take care of them. Yeah, there you go. And there's going to be one more. There he is. Hey, how you doing? Where'd the other one go? There he is. Run him through. Now, we haven't been able to get a single bone wheel drop. That's okay. Uh, you'll notice that there's a treasure on this platform right here. Uh, there's also a summon sign there as well. So I'm going to show you how to get that now. We're going to backtrack one more time. So avoid this skull. Oh, hey. How you doing? That was lucky. Anyway. Where's the ladder? Just make sure there was another bone wheel skeleton behind me. Uh, so what we got to do is we can um, we got to drop onto a very specific platform, and then that will allow us to uh, to gain access to that armor set that's on that corpse. And there's also a summon sign there for Paladin Leroy. Um, you don't need to summon him, but Paladin Leroy does have a mini. It's it's hard to say a quest line, but it's basically the same sort of quest line as uh, Kirk, Knight of Thorns, in that you need to kill him as an invader, and then you get his armor. Um, anywho, so from here, we can sort of see... Oh, boy. Yikes. So from here, we can see down there. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, just roll over there, like that. Roll once you land. That's where you live. Lars Sullivan, Nameless Soldier. We can summon Paladin Leroy if we like. I'm just going to double check to make sure we don't have to summon him to do his quest line, but I don't think we do. Paladin Leroy. Uh, Tomb of the Giants. Um, yeah, you don't have to. Um... Grant. 
Yeah, okay. You don't have to summon him, so we're not going to. But he's very helpful. He's really strong. Uh, he's basically... Um, what's his face? Garl Vinland. It's sort of like a, another Garl Vinland kind of guy. Um, but unfortunately, he doesn't have any, anybody to protect in this game, so he's just sort of out here on his own. All right, so we are going to drop there. I'm just making sure there's no nothing over here as well. All right, we're going to drop here. And then this, I believe, is the Sorcerer set. Drop carefully. Great. The Priest's hat, so the Holy set. And the Mace. Right. Okay, so now that we've done all that, we can fight the boss. Which is... Pinwheel. Now, there may be some Bonewheel skeletons down this hallway, so just be careful. Alright, nothing. Uh, so there's a corpse up there. We can't get that till after we kill the boss. Uh, Pinwheel is not a hard boss. He's actually quite easy. But, that said, if you die to him, it's sort of a mark of shame on your house because uh, he is laughably easy. But if you come down here really early in the game, you can die to him. But since we have a plus 15 weapon, he's, uh, he's going to die in a few hits. Uh, what he can do, though, is he can split himself into clones, very similar to Fool's Idol in Demon's Souls. Um, but he's a lot easier than Fool's Idol. Uh, but all of his clones can do all the same spells, and all of his clones die in one hit. So you just want to kill him before he manages to bring up any clones. All right, so just drop into the room, and then this triggers the cutscene. pinwheel he can disappear he can summon clones there you go but as you can see we are just wrecking him right now the lower his health the more clones he spawns again very very similar to Pool's idol but you can stagger him oh that wasn't him oh my god he duped me way to go pinwheel congratulations but that's it just a few hits pinwheel's dead and killing him you automatically get the right of kindling right here and you may now kindle beyond the normal limit. So this allows you to kindle bonfires uh, three times, giving you a total of 20 flasks maximum. So we get the Rite of Kindling, Humanity, and Homeward Bone. Then he also has a chance to drop one of three masks. The Mask of the Child is really good. Uh, the Mask of the Child um, gives you... It has a stamina restoration, very similar to, uh, to the Grass Crush Shield. So your stamina recovers very quickly with Mask of the Child. There are three masks. There's Mask of the Father, Mother, and Child. And I think Mask of the Father is the rarest one. Um, but you can farm the pinwheel clones later on in Tomb of the Giant uh, to get those. Um, so we're almost done here. Um, well, that's a really highly rated note. I had Framped on it. Um, so basically the story with pinwheel is that he was a necromancer... Or he was like a mage that got into necromancy to try to resurrect his wife and child. Uh, very sad story, as always. So, this is a shortcut over here. Is that a developer note? It was. Wow, I never... I don't remember that developer note. Anyway, so, this will lead you back into the catacombs. And the reason this is even here is, one, it's a recursive world, so everything's very interconnected. Um, but, if you have not yet placed the Lord Vessel... Um, you will not be able to complete Tomb of the Giant. You will get stuck. And that's not something you want to have happen to you. Um, so they give you a way out, which is which is nice. Over here. And then... Okay, I wasn't sure if there was like a hidden treasure over here. Anyway, so this is Tomb of the Giant. As you can tell, it's completely black. And that is why the Sunlight Maggot, or at the very least, the, uh, the Skull Lantern is very, very helpful. Um, all right, what I'm going to do is... I could have sworn there was a bonfire here at the start, but I, I guess not. Um, yeah, I guess that's why they give you the Homeward Bone. Um, I don't want to adventure into Tomb of the Giant just yet, so I'm going to end this part of the walkthrough here, and then we will continue the next part in Tomb of the Giant. Um, 
So yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Dark Souls Remastered, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch, and as always, I'll speak Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.